Hi again. This is Mike Jones, and uh, <laughs> this little place here in the woods reminds me of the movie, was it, and the book, uh, Snow on Cedars, Snow Falling on Cedars, which was filmed not too far from here. Uh, but I am a little, on a little hike from my house, and uh, I'm gonna try to do another video blog out here in the middle of the woods where no one can hear me. Uh, there's a topic that's very dear to me that I want to eventually write a book on. It's on apologetics, but a different approach to apologetics than most people I've done before. And with the question, how do I know Christianity is true, or how do I know that God is there, is the basic subject. But I want to do it in a very, very candid way. Now, just a sidebar, uh, I have great ambitions of writing several books, uh, and I know I'm not alone. Uh, lots of people want to write books, and there's lots and lots of very good books out there. And the chances of this falling in people's hands, I know the odds are against me. But these are things I have come up with through the process of living and through my life and struggling and thinking and reading that I think is valuable for people. And that's why I want to do these. It's not to, you know, to be famous or to get rich. <laughs> Writing books actually costs a lot more money than, uh, than, than it ever makes. Uh, but, but I just want to help people who've been in my shoes, because I didn't have these resources when I worked through the things I had to work through. So when it comes to apologetics, so th these talks like I'm doing like this are totally unplanned. They're ad lib, so it's a little bit hard for me to put thoughts together. But I'm going to try to organize in a way I would if I was writing. And when it comes to apologetics, there's really three major issues, uh, approaches to apologetics, to how we know anything, uh, epistemology, Epistemology. I have a hard time with that word, epistemology, the, the, the scientific, science of knowing, uh, but also specifically how do we know God is there and how do we know Christianity is true. And that's what, there's going to be a series of uh, little video uh, blogs on that. So the way I look at it, this shoe is broken down into three categories. Uh, the influence of reason, and I'll talk about that a lot, and the influence of psychology or our psychological selves and the influence of social uh, social settings and social I just simply mean any interaction between human beings now what I mean by psychology or the or our psyche um, which I lay out clearly in my book butterflies in the belfry is I do believe that the Greeks have messed up our thoughts of what it means to be spiritual that I do believe that the psychological and the spiritual are one and the same so that's why I don't divide up a spiritual factor, because our beings are made up of intellect and emotional, which are tied together very closely in the brain. One can influence the other very well. And then there's the social. So this first segment, part one, I'm going to really focus on the social. One of the best examples I can think of, of the influence of the social, has to is an ima not imaginary, it's a true place, but one of my favorite places in the world is Marrakesh, Morocco. Now it's, it has direct flights from all over Europe, so it's become sort of a Disneyland, but on the backdrop of a real historic place. So Marrakesh was built out in the desert of Morocco at the foothills of the Atlas Mountains about, I don't you know, I don't have access to internet or anything, I think roughly a thousand years ago, maybe 1200 years ago or longer. And it was an oasis because there's a river that comes out of the Atlas Mountains near there. So it's got this gorgeous, I don't know, 40 foot, 50 foot red, red dirt adobe wall around the old city. So when I was there a few years ago, I was imagining what it would have been like to be a little kid in this city back about, um, say, even, even 100 years ago, 100 years ago on back. So in your world was very, very limited. Uh, your world was uh, the people live in the city. I don't know, probably 20,000 lived there then, maybe more. All were Muslims at that time. Uh, and it was easy to believe. It was easy to believe in Islam. As it was easy to believe in God. I think it would have been very unusual to live in that city and not believe in God or be a Muslim. Now, there may have been exceptions. There may have been people that had grown up as thinkers and really got off the path of thinking. But their only contact with the outside world were caravans that came in from the coast and also down to Africa. 
So they probably had a, a limited contact with some Europeans, uh, even Christian Europeans, and maybe coming up from Africa, uh, some contact with animus coming from the, the southern Sahara. So I'm saying the social influence there was made it very, very easy. It was an automatic thing to believe in God and to believe, a, or in that case, Islam was 100% uh, true. But now we live in a polyistic society. It's been made, I'm going to fall here on the snow, I think. Matter of fact, this, the snow is white rain. It's supposed to be raining right now, but I'm afraid that I got it wrong. It's snowing. Uh, that It's very easy to believe what you believe when your entire society believes the same thing. But in a poly, polyistic society where we have many different beliefs uh, that you run rub elbows with every day at work, at school, on TV, uh, that you're faced with challenges constantly about your faith because you see good, decent people. Some of them are atheists. And these are not evil, bad, bad people. These are good people. Uh, who are very smart and agnostic, Muslims, Hindus, uh, the whole spectrum. So never before, at least in Christianity's times, I think there has there been a challenge on a social level as they are now in a po living in a polyistic society. Poly, yeah, a uh, polyistic society. Now, so that's the social influences on believing, and that's why in the 21st century it is a tremendous challenge, I think, for my kids' age groups and all those coming up. There's a mass exodus out of Christianity. And the reason for that is that no one has been given a, a, a clear apologetic that makes sense, that addresses all the issues. So I'm going to close this little segment here just by saying one thing that's profound, I think it's profound, it's profound to me, and that is if someone starts to give an apologetic to you of why Christianity is true or why God exists, and they start out with the premise that they are 100% sure God exists or that Christianity is true, then you can't believe a word they say because it stops being apologetic. It becomes uh, propaganda because they've already concluded a position and it is impossible in a fallen human state for anyone to conclude a position, absolutely. So the very first statement they make, 100% sure God is there, 100% sure Christianity is true, is a deception. They're either lying to you or they're lying to themselves. And therefore, I really think you can't trust anything they say beyond that point. So I'll make it clear. Do I have 100% belief that God is there, that Christianity is true? I do not. And one of my biggest struggles in my early evangelical life was I was taught you had to be 100% true, or believe this 100%, and that was the only option. And I could never obtain the 100% accuracy of belief simply because it's not natural. That's the way God made us. Well, it's not the way God made us, I believe, if you follow the Christian uh, the Christian theory of existence and morality is that God created us perfect, but we're fallen, and our reasons are fallen, our emotions are fallen, we're fallen socially. So you can't take a fallen person and reach absolute certainty. Now, when I grew up in the evangelical world, you're given the option of believing 100% certainty or throwing the whole thing in the garbage. And a lot of people threw the whole thing in the garbage. I almost did several times. But that's really not the two options. The two, the two options is faking it, and then if the faking stops working, you throw it in the garbage, or being realistic. And this is why I'm calling this a candid apologetic, because I'm going to talk candidly about how can we know with some certainty, not certainty, but or so, why I can have confidence that God is there and that Christianity is true. But in my uncertainty, I have to have deep, profound respect for atheists, for agnostics who don't believe it. Uh, I do respect them all because it's not easy. Now, those atheists who say in the same way with certainty, God does not exist, and they know that for certain, I feel the same way as I do towards Christians who say they have 100% certainty God is there and Christianity is true. 
because you're starting with an unsustainable position and therefore you're either doing self-deception or you're just trying to intentionally deceive others. So I don't trust some of those uh, uh, famous atheists who've started out in that position either. So anyway, dealing with the social point, I'm just trying to, to make it clear that we're under tremendous pressure only because we have the privilege of having uh, interactions with people of multiple faiths, multiple ideas, uh, um, and that therefore in itself is a challenge to us. And I'll do part two later. All right, I better look where I'm going because I think I'm lost. <laughs>